Hello everybody, this is Dr. Pennington again. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, the concept of something called the equilibrium constant. It has a symbol big K here. Um, before we go into anything, I want to just compare this K with the K that you've seen before. Uh, in the previous chapter of kinetics, you saw something called the rate law, where you saw something like this. You had your rate, which was equal to the rate constant, times the concentration of whatever species raised to a particular exponent. Notice that <coughs> that k is, like we said, the rate constant. All right, small k it has whatever units it has, depending on the order of the reaction. So, rate constant, small k equilibrium constant big K so the first thing to make sure that we understand is that this is not the case big K is not the same as little k we're talking about two different chapters so this stuff we are not going to concern ourselves with in this chapter all right so that's that out the way first so let's talk about the concept of an equilibrium what actually is an equilibrium well, it's all to do with with uh, chemical reactions. We can have several chemical reactions. For example, the reaction of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid to give sodium chloride, table salt, and water. Uh, that's a reaction that occurs very easily, acid and a base. And that goes essentially all the way to completion. So you use that normal arrow you'd usually see for a reaction. That means the reaction goes one way and doesn't go back. However, there are some reactions, so-called equilibrium reactions or equilibria, where the reaction doesn't go one way to completion. Uh, in fact, it can go to products and then go back, then to products and then go back to reactants and back and forth and can swing back and forth. And there's actually um, an awful lot of reactions that are equilibria. Um, aspirin, for example. All right. Everybody knows what aspirin is. Aspirin is a uh, organic compound, an organic compound that's made through several steps, <coughs> the last of which is an equilibrium step. <coughs> anyway, an equilibrium is one where the reaction goes both ways. All right. I usually tell people that a good analogy here is a reaction that, bo that goes both ways can be considered similar to, say, like... Lady Gaga, who also supposedly goes both ways too, but enough of that. An equilibrium reaction we can show by a double-headed arrow. All right, not this. This means something different. All right, so we're not going to use that. This is an equilibrium arrow. It means we go from one side to the other. We can go back and forth. So this K then is something to do with this equilibrium and really what the K is, it's a measure of once you've reached equilibrium, the ratio of products to reactants or reactants to products. So if you want an equilibrium reaction that is that will give you an awful lot of products, then you want to have a lot of this and just a little bit of this. All right. If you have a reaction that's not very efficient and doesn't go very far, you'll have an awful lot of unreacted reactants and very little product, which kind of sucks if you want a lot of that product. So the important thing is, right now, that the K, the equilibrium constant, is completely dependent on the amounts of reactants and products present at equilibrium. All right. Basically, you put some of these into a reaction vessel, you seal it, and what they do is they set themselves up in equilibrium because each reaction like this, each reaction with an equilibrium arrow, has a particular point where it becomes stable and where it says, okay, I've reached my equilibrium point, I'm going to stop, I'm not going to do anything else, at least it's not going to look like I'm doing anything else. And then you can figure out what the K is for for my reaction. Every reaction, every equilibrium has its own value of K. So you'll see a whole bunch of different values of K. 
um, for all the different reactions that we'll talk about. And we'll talk a little bit about those values here in just a minute, but for right now, uh, I want to talk about how we can actually measure K. You, you can actually measure it two different ways. You can measure something called K sub C. Now K sub C, the little C means concentration. Where you measure the concentrations of each of the species involved at equilibrium use a particular formula we're going to go through in just a minute and calculate the value of K. That's the most common way to do it. However, in situations where you have all gases in your reaction as we do here, you can also measure the equilibrium constant in terms of something called Kp. And if C implies concentration, what do you think P means? Well, what P means is partial pressure. again of each different species. So you can let the reaction get to equilibrium, measure the partial pressure of each species, use the formula that we're going to use in a little bit, and get the value of K. All right. One thing that you'll see later on is that Kc is not the same as Kp, because here you're talking about concentration, so you're talking about pressures. The two are different. So let's talk about what the value of K actually means in terms of where the reaction is or is going to end up or whatever. We can essentially have three different situations in terms of what our value of K can be. We can have a value of K that is bigger than one. We can have a value of K that is less than one. Or we can have a value of K that's equal to one. The last case is is very rare and is unlikely something that you'll actually see, but we'll go through what it actually means. So a K of bigger than one, all right, let's talk about what that actually means. The way to use a reaction like this and figure out the value of K is to say this. Kc, if we're using concentrations, is calculated by the concentration of products in that reaction divided by the concentration of reactants. All right. In this case, the products here are ammonia. So I've got my concentration of ammonia on the top. And then on the bottom, I have the concentration of hydrogen and nitrogen. Now you're probably wondering what we do with the coefficients here. Well, we have to do something with them because we've got to be able to take it into account here. And this is very simple. It's much more simple than figuring out K for kinetics. In this case, the number that is the coefficient in the reaction becomes the exponent in, the, in what's called the equilibrium expression. Alright, so I'm going to put a box around the equilibrium expression. The equilibrium expression for any reaction is this. Now I haven't finished this one yet, so don't worry about this. I have to put a 3 here. But the equilibrium expression is K equals concentrations of products over concentrations of reactants, or partial pressures of products over partial pressures of reactants. Case uh, the equilibrium expression is not just this part; it's everything. All right. So, what do you think a large value of K means in terms of products and reactants? Well, of course, a large value of K means this number must be bigger than this bottom number, and if the top number is bigger, it must mean we have a higher concentration of products. All right. What that means is a K value of one, larger amounts of products. The products are favored uh, at equilibrium. So if, if you ever have a question where you have a K value of something bigger than one, part of what you're going to need to figure out is, well, that means um, my products are going to be favored at equilibrium. So I'm going to have more products than I do reactants. So the concentration of products is probably going to go up, of my reactants is probably going to go down. 
Now, if that's a value of k of bigger than 1, a k of less than 1, as you would imagine, means exactly the opposite, where the reactants are favored at equilibrium. And there are reactions like this that do exist. In fact, there's a lot of them. So what about the k equals 1? Hmm, what does k equals 1 mean? Well, what k equals 1 must mean is that the concentration of products and reactants is exactly the same. Um, and, and so that means something very particular. It means the reaction is already at equilibrium. All right. So equal products and reactants. So therefore product, or I should say reaction, is already at equilibrium. All right. So that's a little bit about what K means, okay, and how we can get it. <coughs> okay. So what if we were to use this equation and this equilibrium expression and try to figure out a value of k. Well, it's, it's actually very simple. A question could say, well, I'm given a concentration of ammonia, I'm given a concentration of nitrogen, and I'm given a concentration of hydrogen. And the question will probably say, these are equilibrium concentrations. If not, that's in another video, so don't worry about that for now. Right now, if the question tells you these are equilibrium concentrations, what's the value of K? All you've got to do is say, for example, if this is 0.1 molar and this is 0.2 molar and this is 0.4 molar, for example, calculate the value of K, assuming all these three are equilibrium concentrations, assuming they are, they're really not, but let's just assume they are, then all we have to do is just say, okay, what's my value for my concentration of ammonia? Well, that's 0 0.1. 0 0.1 squared, because we have the squared here. H2 we said was 0.4, and that's going to be cubed, and then we have nitrogen which is 0.2. So all we need to do <coughs> is just get our calculator out and figure out those numbers. Because 0.1 squared is just 0 0.01. All right, so we know that's going to be 0 0.01 on the top. But 0.4 cubed times 0.2 gives us 0 0.0128 and so when we divide those out what we get is oops, we get is 0.78 all right and that is the value of the equilibrium constant at least it would be if those were actual equilibrium concentrations <coughs> What about the units? Well, it's actually less complex than it looks. Don't worry about the exponents in terms of units here, because really all you're looking at is concentration over concentration. So moles per liter over moles per liter. If it's partial pressures, it's atmospheres over atmospheres. All the equilibrium constant is is a ratio, a ratio of concentration of products to concentration of reactants basically tells you whether or not it's bigger than one, smaller than one, or whatever. So according to what we have here, <coughs> with a k-value of 0.78, we should expect our reactions to be favored at equilibrium. All right? Anyway, that is a little bit about k, kc, kp, and how we calculate it, what k bigger than one, less than one, equal to one actually means. Um, and that is it. Okay, thank you.